Hey, what's up, Crypto Army? I'm Travis, your Crypto Newbie, bringing you my experiences here to learn things the hard way. Just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor and none of my content should be viewed as financial advice. So a quick update on Reflex Finance. And I'll be honest, I actually wasn't planning on doing an update on Reflex Finance today. After two live streams, I was a little tired. I was just going to hold off till tomorrow when we had all the information for the two planned updates. But one of them came out and it's huge, so I wanted to make sure I cover it. So the CEO released a message and in it, he basically stepped down as CEO. He's still going to stay with the project and he's still going to help in any way possible. But he transferred it over to Miles, who's been kind of leading everything for Reflex Finance from the beginning. So let's congratulate Miles, the new CEO of Reflex Finance. Everybody that was concerned about the CEO not being doxxed, well, the CEO is now doxxed. <laughs> Now, the founder is not, but there's nothing about a founder being doxxed. It's the CEO. It's just <laughs> it's, a, it's a different approach for handling that because we, we knew the CEO, the previous CEO, had his business interests and wasn't ready for doxing himself. And I agree. I think Miles is a great fit for the CEO. He's pretty much been the person behind this project that most of us know. So I've got absolutely no problems with Miles taking over as CEO. I think he's going to do a fantastic job. And we're also going to keep the previous CEO in the picture with all of his marketing experience. I see this as kind of a win-win situation. We answer some of the concerns people have about the CEO not being doxxed. He is. And most of the other parts of the team are as well. And Miles has demonstrated he's a great leader. He's going to do great things with this project. So this is great news, and I hope the community sees it the same way I do. I don't see a negative. I don't know how you could turn this into a negative. I'm sure somebody will, but uh, I don't see how you could. <laughs> I'm kind of curious who's going to take over as the CEO now that Miles is the CEO, but uh, that doesn't necessarily need to have an answer today or tomorrow or even next week because most projects don't have a COO. And Miles is perfectly capable of doing both while they try to identify if they're going to put a CEO in there. Congratulations, Miles. I think you're going to do awesome as the CEO of Reflex Finance. I have absolutely 100% confidence in your ability to do this. And since this only came out in the last hour, I'll cut you a little slack for not updating the website. <laughs> now, over the last day, I've talked to quite a few of you during the live stream about launch. So I kind of feel like we've already kind of discussed the launch and yes, it wasn't a flawless launch, but it was a pretty good launch. There was no really big issues and the issues that they did have were fixed, at least from the contract perspective or some of the pink steel stuff. They didn't elaborate on some of the issues they were running into. And some of the issues were a pink seal issue with how they did the tiers. It is kind of what it is. I don't necessarily hold the team responsible for what happened with pink seal. It's regrettable. But in many ways, it was more fair because everybody that got a whitelist spot had the same opportunity. Unfortunately, for people that were in the tier one that thought they had a little bit of time, that wasn't the case. And there are quite a few people to include people on the team that didn't get to buy during the whitelist. So you really can't complain that it didn't go perfectly when people that are actually on the team didn't get a whitelist either and they weren't involved in the private sale. So they bought with every one of us at the exact same rates. You really can't complain when you consider that. Now, I really do feel bad for a lot of the people that bought at all time high. Now on my channel, I've said this repeatedly, my goal is to keep things real. And sometimes that means we have to have a hard chat about reality. Here's the chart. This is the reality that we're in. And this right here sucks. There's no other way to describe it. It sucks. But if you look at pretty much every launch, this is what it looks like. Every one of them. Now go look them up. There's been some recent ones that are easier to find. If you go look at Wi-Fi or you go look at EverReflect or you can try looking for Evergrow Coin, but I'm not sure that you can go that far back. But almost every single launch has this. Now, is every single one of them this high? No, they're not. Why is that one so much higher? It's 8,000 people inside of Telegram. There are a lot of people watching this project and a lot of them bought in. Now, why did it drop so far? For the same reason that others do. Unless there's a vesting period with the whitelist, 
That's usually what happens. There's always going to be a handful of people on the whitelist that are going to sell, get some profits. Generally, they buy back in. And in this case, they did the same thing. There's a couple that bought right back in after they had their profits at a much, much lower rate. This is normal. Now, everybody here knew there wasn't a vesting period with the whitelist. If you bought in not doing your research, I tell you all the time, you got to do your own research. This is what happens. I don't completely understand why people on the whitelist would sell. But in this particular case, they made pretty good profits. I think one of them was 200000 And then they were able to buy back in at a fraction of the cost because other whitelisters also sold. Now, that's a gamble because there's no guarantee, but this is a very normal process. Now, one thing I'm going to change moving forward if I ever cover a launch on this channel, I'm, I took a screen capture of this so I can talk to this and say, this is what can happen because this is the reality. This generally is what happens. When you buy over here, you're kind of gambling. You know, there's so many people trying to buy at the very beginning here. You're gambling. And I think everybody understands how slippage works. We've talked about slippage enough times on this channel. You have to set the slippage above the fee. Why? Because if you don't, it's generally going to fail. Unless you use that hack where you set it at 0.5%. If you don't have the slippage above the fee, the difference between what you're going to get and what they're telling you on PancakeSwap, it's going to cause it to fail. So you have to have that slippage above the fee. When you set your slippage to 49%, subtract the fee, that's the difference in price. So it's not 49%. It's something like 33 maybe. When you click the button that says, yes, you want to buy this, it shows you how many you're going to get. When I click the button over here, because I did the exact same thing, I, I weighed the options, I considered the possibilities of, of just buying in over here against buying in here, and I hit the button. But when I hit the button, it said trillions. It didn't say billions. It said trillions. 49% of trillions is still a trillion. So I knew exactly what I was doing when I hit that button. Now, I think a lot of people didn't look at the quantity. That's my guess. If that's not the case and you looked at the quantity and said trillions and it went through, that's a problem on PancakeSwap. That's not a problem on Reflex Finance. It shouldn't have gone through. For me, it didn't go through because it was probably no longer in the trillions. It was way over the 49%. And that's the reality of what happened at this particular juncture here. If you bought and you didn't look at the quantity, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That's kind of the situation that it is. You got to look at the quantity. And I know that this sucks to hear, but that that's how this stuff works. If you didn't look at the quantity and you hit the buy button, I don't know what to tell you. The one thing I can tell you is that the quantity that you got was within 49% of the quantity that was indicated. Because if it wasn't, then pancake swap shouldn't let it go through. So it, you didn't lose 60%. You didn't lose 70%. Assuming worst case scenario, we'll call it 50-50. The amount that you would have gotten for whatever amount of BNB you try to spend would have been 50% higher than what you got. But here's the situation we're in right now. The price is going up. And barring a whitelister selling, it's going to continue to go up. But it's entirely possible that a whitelister will sell. It's not possible that somebody has got the private sale is going to sell. They're locked in. So you got to worry about the whitelisters. And a couple of them have already sold out. Several of them bought more. Now, I've read a whole bunch of stuff through Telegram and Discord about, you know, that they thought they'd be able to get more tokens. Yeah, I'd love to be able to get more tokens. But that's how supply and demand work. There's a lot of buying pressure right now. If you're weighing whether to buy, consider the catalysts. Right now, the price is going up. There's a little over 3,000 people that have invested. There's about 9,000 people inside of Telegram right now. That's a big delta. That's a lot of people that are weighing their options, looking for the right price point, possibly waiting for a whitelister to sell and drop the price even further. I don't know what they're thinking about. But that's a lot of people watching this token. And what's around the corner? Coin market cap and coin gecko. When those two things happen, the prices generally go up. And when we've got 6,000 people that haven't pulled the trigger to buy in, it's possible the price is going to go up even higher. We might even get back to that all-time high where we started at 11.04 or 11.05 yesterday. So that's the reality of the situation. I've been buying in. Now, 
I'm pretty much tapped out at this point. So I'm glad I tapped out before we started getting into the 398 range. But it might drop down. I, I might end up upside down. It could happen. A white lister could sell. Or somebody that has bought in a lot of tokens off of the white list could sell. There were some $100,000 purchases. Those people could sell. Or they could be waiting for Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko and that price to sell. Projects on launch are very unpredictable. They're very chaotic. I've said that repeatedly. You got to remember the term hold on for dear life. You got to hodl. If you try to sell and you're upside down, that's when you record losses. Have faith in the project. Have the fundamentals changed? Well, in this case, yeah, a little bit. The CEO changed. But he went from the CEO to the CEO. You have to weigh that fundamental change. What does that mean to you? But that's the only thing that's changed is we now have a CEO that's doxxed. And most people would say that's a positive. If I cover another launch on this channel, I'll be sure to explain this a little bit better as far as showing graphs, showing some of these examples to illustrate what can happen. And I'll talk a little bit more about how slippage works because I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding on how slippage works. You should never get less than what you've got that slippage set for. So if you've got it set for 50%, you should never get less than half of the quantity that's indicated there. If you ever set slippage at 50%, you have to accept the possibility that you're only gonna get 50% of the quantity. That is exactly what you're saying when you set it at 50%, is you accept that risk. Now, I don't typically buy on PooCoin. I've always talked about PancakeSwap on this channel, so I assume PooCoin works kind of the same way. If it doesn't, my recommendation would be to use the PancakeSwap because it worked. I tried to buy in the trillions and it failed. So the mechanism did work. And if it hadn't, I would have emailed PancakeSwap and said, this is what happened. It showed me trillions, I got billions. There's a big difference there. Now I think the launch went phenomenally yesterday. Yes, it had some pickups, especially with the whitelisters. That sucks. I really feel bad for the people that missed out, but it was a fair launch. And I'll make sure to emphasize this in the future. If you get a whitelist spot, don't wait a second. You have to have your finger on the button ready to go immediately. Don't waste any time because things happen and things happen all the time on pink sale. I'm just thrilled that it wasn't a rug pull or a scam. <laughs> go look at pink sale. I've said this before in my videos. One of the reasons I don't like doing launches is because there's a lot of rug pulls and scams out there. And I would hate to cover a rug pull or scam on this channel. And I was pretty confident that that wasn't going to be the case with this project. And I think at this point, we all know that's not going to be the case with this project, but it's always a concern. Anyway, I just want to say congratulations to Miles. You're going to be an awesome CEO. I have complete faith in what you and the team at Reflex are going to do with this project. Until next time, stay strong with those dominant hands.